Hey everybody, welcome to Daily Laughers. This is your Laugh of the Day, video number 186. It's the 4th of July and that's Independence Day here in America, so if you're celebrating, happy uh, Independence Day to you. We are treating this video pretty much just like any other video. We're here to show you how to laugh on purpose. We do it every day and we want to inspire people around the world to adopt a daily laughter practice of your own because it feels great and it has a lot of health and social and spiritual benefits. Even when there's nothing funny, you can just laugh on purpose and your body and your brain can't tell the difference so you feel great and, and you get all these benefits. So we're laughing with people from all around the world and all around America and today joining me from Arlington, Texas, this is Rhoda Kepperta. Hi, it's good to see you Rhoda. Hi. Hi, Dave. Good to meet you. Yeah, thanks for laughing with me. I know we just met uh, in the past couple of days on Facebook where we have a, a great big group for Daily Laughers, and we invite our viewers to join us there and subscribe to our Daily Laughers YouTube channel and meet all these people who laugh every day from around the world. Uh, Rhoda, you're a certified laughter yoga teacher, but you're also an elementary school art teacher. Yes, sir. So, yeah, so I want to I wanna know how you bring the laughter into the classroom, but um, maybe you can first show us some of the ways that you like to laugh and, and if it applies to what you do with the kids. Tell us about that, and then we'll, we'll talk some more after we laugh, and people will laugh along with us. All righty. Well, um, I do apply this to myself first oh, to, um, to be centered <laughs> Like the and oxygen mask. So, <laughs> right? Because um, uh, uh, when I first became a left yoga uh, teacher and leader, um, I, I was so enthusiastic that my classes would get, we would get just so, uh, so loud and so enthusiastic with laughter. I had to kind of rein it in uh, a little bit. And so, um, but when my, when my children get uh, stressed, uh, I don't know if anybody can relate to uh, the fear of doing art. Ironically, um, it's it's a scary thing. And so um, when we need to override the human brain's propensity for negativity uh, and fear in the face of something new, um, uh, I like to do what's called pulling weeds and planting flowers. Okay. So. Uh, and for myself, my own practice, I mentally see pulling those weeds, <laughs> getting, getting all that negativity and fear out of the way so I can plant Stress, yeah. the beautiful joy and, and love and peace and sprinkle in those seeds of light <laughs> and love in my heart and mind. That's, that's one of my personal practices and then um, uh, with the kids sometimes when I'm trying to cheer somebody up some uh, I've got five-year-olds through 12 year olds and so it, it, all sorts of personalities almost 600 students a week wow. every week. <laughs> you know, it, it gets pretty stressful it's very fast-paced and and so um, to, to, to get myself or somebody else out of a, a just a, a kind of a, a funky moment. Um, I like to do the... Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it works. <laughs> well, they say what you resist persists. So the more, yes. the more you try not yes, to laugh, the more you will laugh. Um, the brain... <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. And so, so just uh, emphasizing the positive, you know. Um, and then um, when I'm on break, I keep a little bit of chocolate in my drawer to, uh, to help uh, my brain uh, chemistry. And so I like the laughter and chocolate uh, in my little um, yoga treasure chest full of uh, laughter yoga exercises, all sorts of things, you know, the reminders of, of things to do. A little chocolate never hurt. <laughs> and so, let's have some laughter and chocolate. Okay, I'm going to use imaginary chocolate. Okay. okay, this is good. Oh. Mm. 
You suppose it's like chocolate is is uh, producing dopamine in the brain, just like laughter produces dopamine, and that's that's the pleasure chemical that our brain produces wow. when we feel good. And yes, this is in honor of Dr. Lee Burke's brain research and his research into how laughter affects the body and the brain. All of us laughter yogis know, <laughs> but um, he's also put together a recent um, talk about. Also, how chocolate positively affects the body and the body. Just a little bit a day. Uh, adult brains, uh, measurably improved, you know, brains and bodies. So, laughter and chocolate together. <laughs> well, thank you for these lessons. Are, are there any big takeaways that you see with the kids, like how are the kids benefiting from your infusion of laughter with their art lessons? Well, um, like I was saying earlier, there's a, a, if I encourage people to do things that they've never done before mm -hmm. and um, that's scary. And so to when I'm feeling that my class is kind of feeling a little bit of fear or stress about um, trying a new project, drawing something they've never drawn before or whatever. It's good to just stop and do a couple of minutes, three, five minutes of laughter, yoga exercises with them and uh, just to get up and move yeah. and breathe and <laughs> laugh and, yes, and de-stress. Um, and it's amazing because sometimes with kids especially, cause they're going to act. If they're feeling stressed, they're going to act out and uh, uh, get goofy, get, you know, maybe get even disruptive, uh, inappropriately disruptive. So if I can uh, focus on just pure joy and laughter, which is really easy for kids, mostly, uh, sixth graders, yeah, <laughs> not so much maybe, but, and they need it too. And it's amazing how uh, through that laughter and breathing and moving and joy, uh, settling back into the project is much more peaceful and less stressful for everybody. Yeah. So you're getting and that them to, relieves my stress too. Yeah. So you're getting them to calm down, overcome their own sort of internal objections, and yeah. then uh, feel more peaceful and relaxed. What about creativity? Laughter is said to boost creativity. Do you observe that? Oh yes, yes. Because um, in, uh, telling the kids that there there is no wrong way of doing it, but leaving it open ended, so however they choose to do it is is okay yeah that leads to a big like with anybody I mean can you imagine it's like well uh what do I do <laughs> and so to to stimulate the creativity with laughter um that usually sparks something you know anything it's like just make a mark just if you need to close your eyes and just and and just uh, slap some paint on there. Uh, it, it's it's great, uh, you know. Yeah. Actually, being a laughter yoga leader and teacher, uh, you know, it's a great thing. It's it's scary uh, to be fun and goofy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't I don't experience that personally, but I I realize that that's not uncommon, especially for new people. I think people get over that, but. But I think for children, I think your point is well taken that a lot of what happens in school is, you know, you're taught something, you're asked to regurgitate it, and you're judged or graded, did you get it right or wrong? But in art class, there is no right or wrong, just as with laughter, there's no right or wrong way to laugh. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. And uh, 
hopefully these people um, can remember that as a child that their creativity there, there wasn't any wrong in their creativity yeah. there wasn't any wrong in their laughter or their play because a lot of times it's like Shh, quit playing you're playing too much or, you know <laughs> don't laugh you know <laughs> at least in art class they yeah. get to laugh and play and create and uh, um, uh, that neuroplasticity can kick in at an early age and uh because I would love to um, reintroduce uh, my laughter yoga classes someday um, and mix it, uh, incorporate art and laughter together uh, for a higher level of creativity and get help adults get over their fear of creating. Yeah. Well, that that sounds very appealing. I relate to that. I don't do any kind of drawing or painting or sculpting or traditional forms of art. I do a little music here and there, but um, I, I think it would. I, I think having the opportunity to bring my laughter, which I'm very comfortable with, to artistic expression forms that I typically don't participate in probably would be helpful. So I hope you find a, a, a big audience for that project, and you'll have to, you'll have to let us know. We'll, we'll be staying in touch on Facebook, I'm sure. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, thank you for taking the time to laugh with us and, and talk about, I guess we'll call this video, The Art of Laughter. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, thank you so much, Dave, for inviting me today. You're welcome. And we'll be back with another video for our viewers tomorrow and every day the rest of the year. Please subscribe on YouTube and join us in the Daily Laughers group on Facebook. Bye-bye, Rhoda. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>